In addition to the visual quality of your video, there are a variety of factors that affect the efficiency of the encoding process and ultimately the user experience of the video playback. Two factors in particular play a significant role in this encoding process, source quality and frame motion. Let me cover source quality first. You determine the source quality of your video as soon as you press the recording button on your camera. Let me go over some basic guidelines for getting great source video and maximizing the quality in your final compressed video. First, use a tripod to reduce camera movement. If your camera is not steady, most of the image will move, causing a high percentage of pixels in the video to change from frame to frame. A steady camera reduces the number of pixels that change, giving you much better quality at higher compression rates and also providing you with lower data rates. Second, use good lighting techniques. A high-end camera resting on a tripod can still produce low-quality images if there is not enough light. Low light or light gain filters produce video noise on the image. This noise is different for each frame of video and makes it difficult for the codec to compress the file at a good quality. You may need to use or exceed your maximum data rate to compensate for this video noise. My next suggestion is to use the best camera possible, low-grade cameras, specifically consumer-based ones that record an analog signal on magnetic tape, such as VHS, Hi8, and so on, produce much video analog noise. Still cameras in movie mode also have limited quality and generally produce high noise video clips. Even if the camera is on a tripod with excellent light, these types of cameras will produce a lot of noise. Next, do the best you can with what you have to work with. High-end digital cameras, digital Betacam camcorders, and 35mm film cameras produce a clean image if the scene is well lit and they are stabilized by a tripod. Such a scenario produces the best compression ratio and lets you reduce the data rate while maintaining excellent video quality. However, you may not have access to professional equipment, a tripod, or excellent lighting conditions, so just remember, the higher the quality of your video source and the less noise in that source, the lower the data rate required to render a good playback file. Lastly, whenever possible, always encode a file from its uncompressed form. If you convert a pre-compressed digital video format into the FLV format, the previous encoder can introduce video noise. The first compressor has already performed its encoding algorithm on the video and has already reduced its quality, frame size, and data rate. It may have also introduced some of its own digital artifacts or noise. This additional noise affects the FLV encoding process and may require a higher data rate to play back a good quality file. Frame motion is another factor that you need to consider in your encoding work. It is the percentage of pixels that change from one frame to another. This change can result from a person or object moving in the camera view. Camera effects or post-production effects People and objects moving in the camera view can include someone walking past the lens, tree leaves blowing in the wind, cars driving by, or an extreme close-up of a face. Camera effects such as camera panning, zooming, or hand-holding result in almost 100% pixel change from frame to frame and will yield very disappointing results. Post-production effects such as dissolves, fades, wipes, or complex video effects result in a high percentage of pixel changes from frame to frame. In summary, the greater the motion within your video clip, the more information the encoder has to compress. On the other hand, if your clip is relatively still, such as a talking head video, there isn't much changing from frame to frame, making it far easier to drop more frames, thus resulting in more efficient compression. This is because the video compressor uses a method of dropping frames and then encoding a series of fully uncompressed frames. These uncompressed frames, called keyframes, are used to then calculate and rebuild the missing frames during playback. Let me now move on to the next movie and talk about flash video delivery options.